Let me give a little background history of myself here. Uh, for 10 years, from 1964 all the way up to about 1974, I was a workaday uh, experimental physicist in nuclear physics. You cannot understand what it is you're looking at until you invoke quantum theory. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, am I a good quantum theorist? Not on your life. Mm -hmm. But to say that nobody understands quantum theory, like the often quoted uh, uh, from uh, Professor Feynman, if you find somebody who understand, tells you they understand quantum theory, you can assume they lying. That's not really true. Why mm -hmm. is it not true? We all have cell phones, uh, smartphones in our pocket. If someone didn't understand quantum theory, we'd never have that. That said, there are some deep, deep, deep mysteries, which it is true that nobody yet understands, mm -hmm. wave particle dual duality and so on. But let's get down to the nubs here. First of all, is everything quantum mechanical? The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because atoms make up everything we know about. Yeah. You're made of atoms, I'm made of atoms, uh, that chair is made of atoms. So the laws that govern these micro things bouncing around are indeed quantum mechanical. But that's not the part that gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. The fact is there are other aspects of quantum theory just in how do atoms move and what have you. There's some pretty interesting things going on there. Yeah. And one of them that seems to be very popular in the popular literature these days is entanglement. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about entanglement. And at one time, I saw an author that said, everything's entangled. Well, no, no, it's not. And people even talking about psychological entanglement. Entanglement, the language of physics and the language of, 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 that, of, uh, of quantum mechanics seeps into the popular uh, discourse. And, and it's always been the case that oh, the sure. leading edge of science seeps into the popular discourse. Right. And in the 17th century, animal magnetism was the hot topic. Right. Well, you put a, a glass of water in your microwave and you nuke it. No, you don't nuke it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one example. Yeah. So, you know, that's great. I think mm -hmm. those, you know, scientists shouldn't be put on a pedestal and only use their jargon and very, I mean, that's great. I have no objection to that. Mm -hmm. Can I tell a brief story about that? Yeah. Um, there is an idea in quantum theory called quantum leap. You know, go from here to here at a big jump. The quantum leap. Leap, yeah. yeah. In fact, there was a TV series of the same name. Mm -hmm. I'm walking out of the Pentagon one day with a, a colonel. And he said, Ed, we've got a new nickname for your program. It's called quantum leap. And he was really excited. And I said, oh, do we have to? He said, what's wrong? He said, well, quantum, a quantum leap progress report is the smallest possible progress I could have above none. <laughs> That's a crummy name for our project. Well, I grew up understanding that a quantum leap meant that uh, an electron would go from one orbit to another orbit without ever passing through the space in between. Exactly. That's the real definition of it, but it's mm -hmm. seeped into the, into the yeah. jargon of, of everyday discourse, meaning a a massive discontinuous jump no matter how big it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, that's okay. I don't have any problem. Sure. But, and it's a mystery. How does the electron do that? Right. So if if a bowling ball has a whole bunch of atoms in it, therefore is a quantum device, how come I say it's not really it's a classical system, it's not a quantum system? Mm -hmm. What makes me say that where an electron really is a quantum system? Mm. Well, a famous physicist um, of uh, the early 20th century named de Broglie was able to see that sometimes particles are chunks of matter, and sometimes they act like waves. Mm -hmm. And that's a big mystery that no one actually has the answer to, so yeah. Feynman's right about that. Uh -huh. But he's able, given a chunk, he can say, well, what does it act, how, what's this wave like? How mm -hmm. far between the, the ups and hills right. in, in the wave? Yeah. And that it is that wave property that allows electrons to behave like waves going through two slits, and mm -hmm. you get double slits just like, like light does. Right. Um, okay, so why doesn't a bowling ball do that? If you have a big slit that round, you start throwing bowling balls at it, they never show a diffraction pattern. They never show wave properties at all. Mm -hmm. Why? The de Broglie wavelength of a bowling ball, if you could actually compute it, is smaller than the, than the atoms in the surface of the bowling ball. Uh -huh. So that's one of the things that differentiates a, a quantum system from a classical system. Okay. In How other words, there is a quantum wave function for a macro object. Sure, of course. It's just uh, so tiny as to be that's uh, right. irrelevant in the macro world. Precisely. Now, how about a brain? Uh, there's a lot of thought, a lot of discussion out of parapsychology, and there are even journals about it, quantum psychology, mm -hmm. quantum ESP. Yeah. 
I have a real problem with that because mm -hmm. what separate what is the De Broglie wavelength of a brain? It's not much different than the De Broglie wavelength of a bowling ball. Mm -hmm. Your wave function, if you could compute it for your entire brain, does not extend out through the your scalp. Mm. So if you want to say, well, I'm going to affect that thing over there, my, my quantum connection between my brain and it, I'm sorry, it's not going to do that because your wave function for your brain doesn't extend over there.